Delighted to say that I'm joined on the podcast by women's football expert, colleague and friend, uh, Shabana Hearn. Welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me. No, thank nice. you for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about women's football. The Arsenal women in particular is a, a big topic. It's something that obviously uh, Arsenal fans are right across now. But I don't have the level of expertise and I don't want to pretend that I do. Uh, I'd much rather draft an expert in mm -hmm. like yourself. So um, first of all, Shaban, talk to us a little bit about how women's football has taken off since the Euros. We all watched it. Everybody was gripped, fell in love with it. What are the differences this season sort of to prior seasons yeah. following the, the success of England? Well, we knew that when England had hosted the World Cup um, in the past and how England had progressed in that tournament so recently that it, it was just growing and growing and getting there. And after that semi-final knockout from England, that wave, it kind of slowly did keep building. Uh, with the Euros being then hosted here in the summer, Everybody got on that wave, everyone was on the bandwagon, England were outstanding. Um, and the, the worry was that what if everything just drops off now at the end of the tournament? A lot of the players, the, the difference I think now, what I love about women's football is there's still that real relationship with the fans. You know, if you go to Bowdoin Wood to, to watch the, the women's team on a Saturday or Sunday, your best bet is your daughter's going to get an autograph from Leah Williamson at the side of the pitch at the end of the game. That's still there. I'm not sure how long that can last for because their now yeah. profiles are going to new levels. But the relationships are there, the interactions there between the fan and the players. And the players were really pushing. You know, come and see us at our home grounds. You know, come and see us at Bowdoin Wood, which is really easy to fill out now. You know, I remember 10 years ago, my sister played at the Youth Academy for Arsenal. And I actually think there was like nine of us there watching the Arsenal wow. game that weekend. And now we go to Bowdoin Wood. Pretty much every home game with my family, my kids. And it's, it's mobbed. You know, it's busy. It's a good turnout every single time. They're almost now outgrown that ground. Manchester United, for example, with like Alessio Russo and Ella Toon. Um, so like two key players at the Euros, Mary Earps as well in goal. They've now brought this fan base in, you know, f from families. You know, you, you've got kids. You actually would maybe go, I know you take your son to the games, but you might go, I'm going to take them along and see this. And we're all going to have this really fun, friendly atmosphere yeah. where everybody's involved. And it's cheesy, but it is lovely. You know, it's a good place to go. And the fact that you've got that relationship with the fans and the players is really, really sweet. And everyone's on it. You know, they're becoming posters now in kids' walls. And you're seeing them on the TV and you're seeing them on the pack at the Chris in the garage. This has never happened before. And it's not going to go away now. And I love that. Yeah, it's brilliant. The growth has been unbelievable. And, and as you say, you know, women's football is starting to get the respect it deserves. Um, and, and obviously, Arsenal are one of the clubs that have been at the forefront of that for a long time. There's been a lot of emphasis on women's football. There's been a lot of support given to the women's team in comparison to what other clubs were doing. You could argue that maybe Arsenal could have done more. You could argue that every club could have done more. But Arsenal have certainly been at the forefront of that. Um, we haven't talked about this on the podcast at length, but Arsenal went and got a historic victory in Lyon mm -hmm. uh, just days ago uh, against a side that are European champions that everybody thought were going to wipe the floor with Arsenal. We talked about it on 90 Min Talks, didn't we, about what a difficult task that was going to be. I mean, what a moment for Arsenal to, mm. go, to go out there and, and do what they did. I don't know what it was because it was like the complete perfect finished article going away against Leon. OK, Arsenal were just slightly lucky that Leon, were without two of their best players, Cascarino, um, was out, who was a star in the Euros, and Ada Hegerberg, um, who's one of the best players who have ever performed in the Champions League as well. She won the final for Leon. She'd come back from the injury, got the two goals. Um, she's won the Ballon d'Or. Um, she was out as well. But for me, I was worried about Arsenal going into this because defensively, they're a little bit wrecked just now. They're without Leah Williamson and um, Rafa Souza, uh, Brazilian centre-back left foot, unreal. Like when she came to Arsenal, I was like, OK, Arsenal win the league now because <laughs> she just kind of was the, the final piece of that jigsaw. Um, and with both of them out just now in boots as well, not quite sure as to when they're going to be back. I was looking at the Champions League and going, OK, if something happens here, if they drop out the Champions League early on, then they can just focus on the league. What we've seen now is Steph Catley, who's um, plays for the Matildas, usually in, on the left winger at left back. She's dropped into centre back now and was outstanding. You know, she was really, really solid. Lot of women more. Again, another line, is Hero coming back in at the side. Um, so yeah, they were they were just great. They were just sound. They were just good to watch. They were just clinical. They had it all. And in that game as well, Beth Mead just just 
so confident in front of goal. It's like she's in this habit now um, and, it, and she can't change. And I think to go away to Leon and do that and really set a precedent was outstanding. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're, I, I know that the team are feeling like in top of the world just now. It's early days, of course, but based on that performance, they were really pleased with themselves. Yeah, indeed. And, and why wouldn't they be? As we said, historic result. Uh, you mentioned Beth Mead there. She's been brilliant. Uh, she was brilliant at the Euro. She's been brilliant this season. Um, obviously missed out on the Ballon d'Or award. Um, and I know that there's been a little bit of back and forth between Alexia Puteas fans and, and Beth Mead fans about this. Um, talk to us a little bit about Beth Mead and, and how deserving would she have been of, of that award? Can we touch on just that, yeah. that, that beef that's going on just now between um, the Arsenal fans and the Barca fans? Um, I was team Beth Mead going into the Ballon d'Or. I do not begrudge Pateas getting this award whatsoever. She's an outstanding player, right? She's different levels. What she's done for Barcelona this season and last season and, and being so under the radar for quite some time before, um, fine, like, I'm not going to lose sleep about it. But in my opinion, I thought Beth Mead was just a sensational year, right? Okay, our club didn't win the title, but she performed week in, week out. Um, they just fell short at Chelsea, you know, in the last game yep. of the season. Um, but it was the way Beth represented on the European stage and how she represents herself. For me, my opinion, right? See these Barcelona fans? They are like... It's, I've never really known women's football trolls before, but I think I'm being trolled. But I can't, I can't speak Spanish. So I'm like a bit like, I know they don't like me at the minute. Because You're going to spend all night on Google Translate. Yeah, oh my God. okay, this isn't good. Um, but, you know, Beth is... She is. She's really on fire. She's such a good person. You know, she's been through a few changes in the in the last couple of years, and I just look at her now and just think, fair play, yeah. You know, she's so in, in such a good place, um, and our football is is the best I've ever seen her play. You know, she went through a quiet spell for a while. She fell out of the England the England side. She didn't get into Team GB. Now look at her, you know, she's in a really, really good place. But I've no doubt if she can go to the World Cup and maintain, you know, the Ballon d'Or as hers then next time round. Because Alexa Pate is not to make it to the Euros because of that injury, which is hellish. You know, it's absolutely hellish. It's sad. You know, I don't, I, it's not, it's not like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the question was, was Beth Mead robbed? And I was like, in my opinion, she was. But you can't say that, you know, in women's football, because they will get you. They will get you out. <laughs> the trolls are out. Um, Beth Mead is becoming a household name in the women's game. But someone who has been one for a while is Vivian Miedema. Um I, I know at times when Arsenal couldn't score a goal in the men's team last season and Lacazette was misfiring a little bit, people were saying, get Miedema in, yeah. stick her up front. Um, talk to us a little bit about her. What's, what's kind of going on with her? Because there was talk that she might have been leaving Arsenal yeah. uh, not so long ago, but she seems to have got her head down and is, is doing yeah. really well. Yeah, she, she was linked to Barcelona. I think there was rumours of a move to PSG as well. But she decided to stay. Um, and I don't know what it is just now. She was dropping down that little bit deeper last season. Now she's, again, back up in the number nine. She's been benched over the last couple of games. Um, he changed the side for the game against Leon. He stuck with that more at the weekend as well. Frieda Manham coming back in, who's been so quiet this season, yep. um, not really getting much minutes, You know, comes on, has an outstanding game again, getting a, a goal at the weekend, which was great for her. Leah Volte and Kim Little in the midfield are looking so good. So he's, he's able to make those changes up front. You've got Caitlin Ford. Um, you've got Stina Blackstenius coming in now, just now these last couple of games ahead of Viv. Now I'd heard that, that she needed a little bit of time to rest on something, you know, not fully match fit. Um, so perhaps it's that. But at the end of the game, at the weekend against Liverpool, the, the broadcast that was covering it picked up on uh, Viviana Medema and Jonas Edeval, the Arsenal manager, having an exchange on something. Um, and Viv didn't look best pleased at all. Now, it's, you know, Dutch are, they're very outspoken in how they feel about things. And from my experience of having conversations with uh, Viv, is she's, she's very sure of herself. She's very confident. She's a talented, outstanding player. Um, and she knows football better than anyone I've ever spoken to about football. She's just such a, such a brain for it. So she's not happy about something is what it looks like from, yep. from reading that video. And I think it was to do with Mana Wibucci. Mana and Viv played at, Ars uh, sorry, at Bayern Munich a few years ago together. Um, Mana Mabuchi, Japanese international, outstanding, outstanding player. The fact that she's on the bench 
for Arsenal is doing everyone's head in. Like, why is she not getting minutes? Why is she not getting yeah. on? She's a wicked little player. So perhaps her frustrations with it, Jonas, don't don't put Mana on for 30 seconds, you know. So um, there's a, a couple of things going on there. Like we say, she's outspoken. You know, she, she certainly speaks her mind, speaks her truth. Um, but she's a good enough player to have up there anyway. The fact that Viviana Miedema and Mana were Butcher are sitting on your bench, it looks good for Arsenal. Am I right in saying, and I think I'm right in saying this, last season was Idevel's first season in charge, yeah, right? Full season. So yeah. second full season, they missed out narrowly on the title mm -hmm. to Chelsea last time around. People will probably think and, and feel that Arsenal could go all the way this season in the WSL. But do things like this threaten to derail that squad harmony? And could that be a problem in your opinion? I feel the squad harmony is there. You know, it really is there just now. But yeah, I mean, I guess it can. It can have the impact, you know. I, I think things are looking quite good for them, you know, for, for now. Um, but yeah, as, as things like this go on, obviously it can, it can upset any dressing room, especially when it's a character and a, such a high-profile player like Viviana Miedema, you know. Um, and don't forget, Viviana Miedema and Beth Mead are now together. They are, you know, in a relationship, you know. So there's all these things that go on and... I don't know if it can affect their place in the table. I think anything can happen that way, personally. Um, but they are working together the best I've seen them. They're playing very good football. They're, they're, they seem like a happy camp from the outside looking in just now, I would say. But I, I, for me, I, I think Arsenal are serious contenders for the title this season and they have to get a trophy. They have to get silverware. I remember being at Boreham Wood when they won the title. Is that three seasons ago I was pregnant? So is that four seasons ago? I don't know. <laughs> How many years ago would I have been pregnant with kids or three? So it was uh, four. Four. So, yeah. Yeah, it must have been that then. And um, they, they are playing better football than they ever have. So I think they really have to, like, you know, dig deep this season. Chelsea are going to be hard work, but they're, they're without Emma Hayes just now yeah. because of her hysterectomy. We don't know when she'll be back. I don't know if the absence of a character like her will rock that dressing room slightly. Um, and I think Manchester United... Could be, could be at it as well. They're just, they're up there, you know, on goal difference from Arsenal. So they're unbeaten as well at the start of the season. Fascinating season ahead. Mm. Um, Arsenal beat Liverpool at the weekend, just to kind of round off, uh, equaling a WSL record of 12 successive wins uh, with that victory over Liverpool. Mm. Um, how, how did they perform yesterday? How, how's their, I know the form was good mm. uh, going into the game. The result against Lyon was incredible. But although Liverpool are a promoted side, it's not an easy place to go, really, is it? There's quite a lot of coverage yeah. around the Liverpool side at the moment. Yeah, and the thing about Liverpool is they've got a few secret weapons in that team. I don't know if I spoke to you about this um, before. So remember the first game of the season, Liverpool beat Chelsea? Yep. They have um, this player called Megan Campbell. She plays for the Republic of Ireland. She's going to the World Cup. Honestly, she could be the difference. A player like this in your team, she has this mental throw-in that's almost like as powerful as a free kick, if not more powerful than a free kick. Now, because my sister plays with her, I don't know if we've made this up along the way, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure her, she's double-jointed or okay. something like her shoulders dislocate when she makes that move so the ball can go so far she throws it into the box at any opportunity and it causes havoc and that's what happened against Chelsea um, so I actually thought this Liverpool game in the second half Liverpool were just defensively more ready for them you know the games came the, the goals came in the first half the first goal as well in the WSL for Leo Volte, um, who's a who's a brilliant player a lover in the, in the in the midfield so calm so composed what I love about Leo Volte is our dad's at every single game she's from Switzerland and he comes over for every single game so I think he would have been over the moon and, you might as well just move here yeah that's what I think as well um, he would have been over the moon uh, for it as well and again Frieda Manham I'm just like oh you know they've got so many options now um, but I didn't see Liverpool going into this game and getting a win for me Arsenal were too strong and they were the better the team on the day brilliant stuff Shaban yeah. thank you so so much uh, for joining me tell people how they can uh, check out your YouTube channel the link is in the description but you cover all things WSL yeah I mean definitely you've, you're going to tag me in this aren't you of course. You tag me just click on it and subscribe because I cover all things women football and we go do vlogs and it's fun and I'm getting lovely interaction as well so um yes Thank you, please. The vlogs are gold. Yeah. You need to check out the vlogs. Uh, make sure you do. Thank you so, so much. Thank you.